Where's the Dreamcast, right? Well, this is maybe four months. Yeah, four months away. Look at that. Five. I think that's kind of accurate. I think, you know what? This could have been, no, that would be too late for, for uh, spring break. But I, I just rented Smash Brothers. You can see the, uh, the end screens there. And look at that, scan lines. <laughs> what was I talking about back in the day? I just, you know, sometimes on some old TVs you don't really notice scan lines because of um, frame persistence and uh, and blur, you know, the bleeding between the edges of pixels. But you can clearly see I had it on my 20 inch Zenith. This was my very first TV I owned. Uh, I bought it used from a used electronics store in 1999. Or no, I think I got it in, uh, I think I got it a couple years earlier maybe. But this was one of the, one of those steps you take getting your a TV in your room. Maybe, I guess you were even older than that. Maybe it was like getting a record player in your room. Um, but yeah, getting this TV allowed me to play my video games pretty much any time I wanted. So my parents put a lot of faith in me not to be up all night playing video games. Because prior to this, um, the only way I could play video games was in their bedroom. And prior to that, uh, we had a 5200 and it was set up in the family room, but basically the, the only room with a TV. But years later, we got the Sega Genesis and we had a set up on, in my parents' bedroom. So, you know, I can't play that every all the time. Uh, first time I got on the internet was in the library, November 1995. But back then in 1999, you, had, you still had to jump through some hoops to find stuff like that. You know, I went through the old-fashioned, the old analog way of going into the phone book, looking under electronics, and just calling dealers and asking them what used televisions they have. So this is a 20 inch Zenith. I'm pretty sure I had purchased it for $80. A color TV, which was not guaranteed even then, buying a used television set. But I, at this time, I had... Uh, <laughs> um, so, money was a weird thing for me. You know, you go like, how do you get $80 as a kid? Um, well, eh, so, you know, you get, you get money from maybe relatives at birthdays, at holidays, or whatever. And I was never allowed to have my own bank account. And so, and when I wanted to get money out, I had to ask my parents because we basically deposited all checks and all cash into their account. Yeah, very annoying um, for a kid that's like 10 years old or something. Anyways, the point is I always had to ask my parents to get money out of the bank. But at this time, I was actually cashing all checks and storing everything as cash. And so, you know, can imagine having big wads of cash. I'll, you know, the, I'll explain the N64 in a second. But imagine having big wads of cash in... Um, hidden in your room. That was me. All right, we'll talk a little about just the room itself. So this room, the entryway here is maybe two, two to three feet long. And then the actual length of the room is probably another, it's maybe as, about as big as the couch that you saw in the How long is this here. couch? Let's say seven feet maybe. Maybe a little bit longer than this thing. I don't know. Measurements. It's shorter than seven feet. I think it was. I think the room is basically. Uh, uh, probably around eight, eight to nine feet. By around the same width. You know, going this way. And so you can imagine, I, I wanted more floor space here. And um, that's why I shoved my bed, which actually, I guess, could be considered an antique at that time because it was from like the 50s or 60s or something. That was from my, this is my mom's bed. And we shoved it in the closet there. Actually, this thing was survived quite a bit of abuse because I was jumping up and down on the, that, those springs. So, um, yeah, quite a, quite a tiny room. And I, I feel like the only reason I got this room instead of the other rooms, which I 
I would have preferred when we moved into this house. It was like, hey, run to the rooms. You know, I had a brother and sister. I run to the rooms and you pick out the room you want. So I, being the youngest with the shortest legs and weakest legs, ended up getting this little cramped space here, which I mean, it's, it seems like it gets a lot of light. This is with a flash on the desk lamp. You can see it's reflecting off the Sonic 3D Blast poster. And yeah, it never got, it, it got ambient light because the sun would just pass over the roof, you know, would never come in through this way. It was just all ambient light. So um, very depressing, <laughs> very depressing and cramped. Um, I don't know, maybe that's kind of like the reason why I like kind of these cramped spaces where everything is within arm's reach. Like you ever see those anime drawings? They're like um, done from like this with this fish fish eye lens kind of uh, take on them where there was like a girl and she's wearing practically nothing. Maybe she's in like her underwear and in a t-shirt and she's in some sort of pod and there's like shells and little figures and she's eating probably ramen or something silly like that. But it's like everything is crammed in this tiny space and you, and you just you, your eyes just study all that kind of detail. Well, that's how my room was here. And that's kind of how I think I got used to living. So, um, yeah, I like kind of, I like kind of tight spaces. <laughs> um, the N64, as I just mentioned, I bought that with cash as well. That I had saved that was $149 used out of Funko Land. And the only reason I bought it was because my cousins, every time I would go over their place, they had um, Mario 64 running. And... That was, that was it, that was all I needed to buy an N64. So I had saved up cash to get that thing used. This is my dresser, I kept all my, uh, a lot of clothes. I also kept clothes in the closet hanging over me. Um, this is my bed. And over here there was a shelf. And underneath this shelf, uh, if, you, if you stuck your hand underneath like this little opening where the feet were, I shoved like, I don't know, like hundreds of dollars of cash in there um, for several years because <laughs> they wouldn't let me have my own bank account. So yeah, I mean, um, when, I, when I went to the store and just shoved $150 cash in their face, I, uh, I imagine the clerk looking at me like really surprised. Where do you think you are, Bunko Land? See there, there's the Mario 64 box, which I got used from Blockbuster the same day. I actually got my brother to uh, to go have these on that. 40 bucks it cost me. And then and there's Bomberman 64, Yoshi Story in the back there. There's got to be, this is 99, so there's got to be Ocarina of Time. Is Kirby out? I think I, I had Kirby by then. Maybe Bomberman Hero. But, um, I don't know. I think I bought them, a lot of them new, uh, uh, surprisingly. So you can see what good condition I kept things in. So you can only imagine this shelf over here that I'm not showing you that had uh, the, uh, I don't know, my Game Boy games in their, in their boxes, so. And underneath we got PS1. You can see the lids popped. Why is the lid popped? Well, if you notice in the back right corner there, we've got the game wizard. Suddenly, I, the evil math magician, shall capture all the children and force them to do homework forever. Plugged into the serial port, which allowed us to play burned games, dude. And well, I didn't have a CD burner, but I don't know. I, it's kind of weird because this is the early days. Still, um, I'd still say this was the early days of the internet and putting your faith into anybody even then was kind of sketchy but i found some guy on the internet he was selling burned playstation one games and so you know he had a list and i picked out some like coro q and coro q jet you know he had american games he had japanese games he had uh, i picked out i remember silent bomber was one of the ones i picked out i hander um r type delta eventually i would go on to buy these games but he had, i was really surprised by by the amount that he was uh, he had access to so, um, and just like I said, just uh, imagine just like sending your money off to somebody you don't know who on the internet, waiting weeks 
and then you know discs arrive in the mail but that's not to say i didn't i didn't buy any games myself like in this spot there we can't see any of the um the end labels yeah if i mean i had chocobo's dungeon chocobo's racing jumping flash 2 motor tune grand prix um crash bandicoot uh i think the last game i bought for the ps1 was omega boost uh from walmart for ten dollars brand new so you got the extreme green controller there in its box in the background got the demo disc of the ps1 <laughs> <laughs> these demo discs so this ps1 died i think once or twice on its own we got like i said we got that from fun claim by trading in some solid genesis games like uh, ranger x and castlevania bloodlines hyperstone heist all our all our genesis stuff we traded in to get that ps1 and no video games i know what do you do but we got this we got these demo discs with games like um extreme espn extreme games and um what we learned was that anytime uh and we bought the warranty with it so i guess we were yuppies in that sense but thankfully we did because the ps1 died on us so what we learned was that anytime we took the ps1 back and and they just replaced it no questions asked they gave us like the next brand new demo disc so you know if it was spring 1999 and then we took it in the fall they would give us the fall 1999 disc and we have a whole new set of games on there so i think we did this like two or three times just for the heck of it so unfortunately this isn't i, I don't believe this is our original um ps1 that we traded in but uh, i mean I, we still have the last ps1 um in in actually in this in the closet where i bet is Let's study it. What else we've got down here? We've got the VCR, which is a hand-me-down. A lot of stuff in this room is, is hand-me-downs. We already talked about the antique bed here. This bureau is a hand-me-down. This coffee table that my uh, very first TV is sitting on. Then we got this desk here. It was my brother's. This basket here. This wicker basket, which held a bunch of magazines. Um, all hand-me-downs. All like, hey, may I have this? Sure. <laughs> Uh, and, and that's how, you know, you build up things. I think it looks fine. <laughs> um, this is actually this, this, this basket here. I remember it's, it's right now it's sitting my N64, probably because I was afraid of it overheating by sitting on the carpet. But prior to that, it held all our, um, Sega Genesis games in their cases. So even my brothers were in there. But anyways, we, what we got on this, on this? VCR. Can we see any any of the titles for the for the uh, ends there? I mean, we we know we've got some burn stuff there, like a Maxell or uh, maybe a Sony stuff we taped off the TV, burned, <laughs> recorded, whatever. But I mean, I know I had other things like uh, Godzilla raids again, and I I think I had some Disney cartoons that I got as a gift one year from my aunt and uncle yeah and that Godzilla phrase again I bought it at Sam Goody for $13 and for a long time that was the only way you could get Godzilla raids again it was a very it was actually a pretty expensive VHS on eBay for a while but oh yeah look at these guys down here the Jacobo and the Ma plush uh, promoting Jacobo's dungeon probably two uh, there was a store talking about random places on the internet. You know, this is Amazon must have been around, but um, yeah, this store sold UFO toys or UFO toys, which are basically crane games in Japan, but they offer way cooler prizes than anything in America. And um, yeah, they would they would have regular updates of new products that would come along, and I would go like, oh yeah, I'm gonna get the Chikos. Dungeon plush. I'm gonna get the the. I had I had. A, I, I'm gonna say some other ones I had here, but it's gonna make you upset when I tell you what happened to them. So I got these Jacobo mug. I got the the Temjin from Virtual On. Had a plush of that. I had Sonic Adventure, the the original Japanese release of those plush, Sonic Knuckles and Tails. 
And so anyways, the point is, what, <laughs> what happened to them is I, um, one day my, one of my sister's friends came over and I was a teenager at this time. And, you know, I, uh, I got out of the shower and I remember eyes on me as I got out of the shower. You know, I, I left the bathroom basically and, and, uh, I think I was dressed, but, um, you know, somebody following me and they followed me into my room and they walked in behind me I had i felt like these eyes on me anyways there's this girl uh i've never i you know i i was speechless you know this is this is a pretty attractive pretty attractive girl behind me and um she just looks around and i feel like i felt like she looked at my my plush toys and was like oh you're a baby okay i can't and so I packed up all these plush toys and I put them in the attic. And um, yeah, um, what had happened was, this is gonna make me really angry, Ken, because every time I bring it up, my sister decided one day while I was away to um, clean out the attic. And, and because, because everybody loves to sit in the attic and she threw away all my, uh, a lot of all my toys that I had up there, which were right by the stairs for convenient access, because I was always my plan to bring these things down again. I just didn't know when. And yeah, she she basically chucked them, and I wasn't home at the time. They ended up it was it was raining, and my brother had called, and I was like telling him to get him out the, the the stuff out of the garbage, but he just thought it was ruined or something because of the rain. And so yeah, they all went into a garbage truck. End of story. Piss me off again. Thank you very much for bringing up that story. store we got a velociraptor koosh ball probably from jurassic park we got some suction cup thingy and we got i don't know like a fritos corn i don't know yodel i don't know what they're called it's just it's springy so uh this is my dinosaur shelf over there we're not we're not gonna see any of the um I had a bunch of figures, like action figures and plush over here that you're not going to see, unfortunately. But on this shelf, we've got pretty much all my dinosaur collection there. Uh, we got the Rex from Jurassic Park, the big red one. I got that that year. The movie came out in 93 as a birthday gift. We've got our Zoids, Brachiosaurus, with our, uh, had the motors and everything. Pretty slick. That was a Christmas gift. Um, yeah, man, these things were everywhere. You know, those skeletons that you put together. Here's one of the shark over here. You can see they always sell those in the museum shops. This is from, I, there's a poster back here, maybe. I don't know, there's scratches on this, but. Anyways, it's from the, it's from the uh, New York Natural History Museum, right, right by Central Park. Sonic 3D Blast. Look at that. And the 3D glasses. Magazine fold out there. Let's see what's, the, what's going on in the desk. Yoshi story. So a lot of the promos. Uh, um, so this was 99. I think I, I started selling on eBay in 96. And what I would uh, what I would sell was some old toys we had. But also I would sell promos that I would pick up from stores, posters and um, standees and such. And um, yeah, so these are some of the ones I kept and still have. Hold on a second. This is going to be dusty. What a shame. Here we go. Here's the Yoshi Story one I still have. And I, I have another one in here of Pokemon, I think. Um, 
You know, Kirby 64 may have been one, one of those other games. Uh, let me see, where is it? I don't know. Wait a second, there it is. Look at that. Look at that, right in the top corner there, stuck to the side of the wall. Hold on a second, where is this? Oh, it's behind me somewhere. Check it out. <laughs> and what you what these would be, these would be on the end caps or on the edges of of shelves. And I'd pluck them off and I'd say like, hey, could I have this? And sometimes they'd say yes, sometimes they say no. Hey, look, this is not even like, this is a promo, this is basically saying pre-order Pokemon. I wonder what, I wonder what, what uh, I'm, the, I'm not the biggest Pokemon fan, but I wonder what people would do for pre-order promotional uh, stuff like that today. But uh, I have one for Kirby 64 as well. Uh, Here's Kirby. This one's faded a little bit. Sorry, it's just the way I had the camera set up. Maybe I'll get a better shot of that later on. But, yeah. <sighs> I can't see any other promos. I know, like I said, this was probably from an EGM or something like that, a magazine fold out. We have down the bin there, we have Nintendo Powers from era of 1998 to 99 because it was i believe this was the era when i asked the, the year should i say where i asked for a subscription to nintendo power and this was these were the issues where they were talking about ocarina of time like when it was released there was pod racer on the cover i showed some of these off when i was going through my big wicker box full of comics and other gaming paraphernalia that I had collected over the years and you know was my, my comic cards were in there stuff I pulled out from newspapers but yeah that's what's in that bin there so we can actually probably see the edge of that Zelda issue and the pod racer issue uh, I got a couple things too from the power catalog I think I remember getting a music CD and I got a leather wallet of Ocarina of Time maybe I could show that off desk here we've got some printouts of you know gremlin stuff because you gotta understand before this it was really hard to to dig up merchandise even in 1999 i, I think I, I had trouble tracking down the gremlins 2 soundtrack on uh on cd which is something i was getting back into because um you know just when when media disappeared back then, merchandise disappeared, you couldn't get the little applause figures anymore. Tracking them down on eBay, there weren't people that thought of selling stuff on eBay at that time. So now you go on eBay, you can easily track down a CD of Gremlins 2. Or maybe those, like I said, those little PVC figures of various, you know, maybe they had the raisins or the, or the Gremlins ones. Where are they? I have this one over here, you know, like this guy. Um, but yeah, back then it was it was still kind of hard. So we'd go on fan sites and they would have various pictures from the production and whatever, and you'd print them out. And this one I actually printed out and colored in. I don't know how how these are in color. There, maybe I printed them up at the library or something. I don't I don't know. This was we had a dot matrix printer, but I don't remember when we got that replaced. So. Um, we got some, uh, yeah, these are Gremlins stickers, hologram type of the, of the original Gremlins, 1984 Gremlins. And I got those gifted from this girl in school, which should have been a big hint to me, like she was, that she was interested in me because, um, you know, now I thought about it later on, this girl had given me these stickers. And it wasn't it wasn't so out of place for a class size of maybe 20 to 24 kids that everybody you might you know you might get a gift from from somebody even if you're not really super friendly to them. like in terms of like I don't know like you play with them it's just like everybody gets a gift because because you know everybody um, you just may not hang out with 
someone else more than the others. But anyway, she gave me this gift there, and I didn't even think about it. Um, but later on, I thought, well, wait a second. She This was in eighth grade. I remember she gave me these stickers. And um, which tells you something. She knew that I was interested in gremlins. But in sixth grade, <clears throat> when when uh, kids were, the you could only go to, the, there was a dance for the sixth, seventh, and eighth graders. And then, you know, that was the highest the school went to. But the first dance you could go to was in sixth grade. So I went to it and pretty much everybody was a wallflower. And, and so she approached me and said, hey, do you want to dance? And I didn't, I didn't know anything about dancing, but I said, sure. I think I, I, I was like, you know, I knew, you know, the rocking back and forth kind of slow dance. So that's what we did. We danced like that. And I didn't think anything of it. I just thought, you know, it was, I just think about how I must have did. So, so she, <laughs> this is getting really sidetracked, but she asked me, she asked me to dance in sixth grade. She had this crush for a long time. She asked me to dance in sixth grade, eighth grade. She gave me these stickers, um, in music class one year. Um, like I said, I thought about this later on, so don't, I'm not just discovering this now, but in, in music class, uh, maybe in sixth grade or maybe it was in seventh, but I remember hearing her and her friend, which I actually was more interested in talking about who they like in terms of boys. And I heard, oh, I like Mur, where that's my name. And I was like, wow, uh, <laughs> Uh, I didn't know she was interested in me. This was the, I thought it was the girl I was interested in, not the girl who gave me these stickers. So I, uh, <laughs> I thought like, oh, it was the girl I was interested in, but it, but it turns out that it was probably this girl. And what's disheartening is, I was getting to this point, is that this girl, she asked me, uh, to attend this graduation party in eighth grade. And I totally blew it off. It was like, <laughs> I, blew everybody. I know I went to one graduation party actually, but, um, but yeah, I didn't respond or anything like that saying that I wasn't coming to the, to the, uh, graduation party. Hey, there's a roll of film on the table there. Looks like it needs to be developed. I wonder what's on that film. Um, I, I didn't take too many pictures like this. Uh, I think I said this already, but I just, I felt like a picture like this was almost like a waste. It took, it, it was money. It cost money to develop any picture. So there had to be a reason to take a picture. And taking a picture like this, I was like, I must have had the forethought going like, huh, I might want to see this again sometime. But I, I believe I took a picture of this wall facing here where I kept all of my Game Boy games in their boxes and everything. So um, maybe I can... I can dig that up someday. I think I've said that before, but... Um... Yeah, I don't know. I think... I've talked a little... A little much. Maybe a little too much. I'd like to hear your experiences. Tell me about your command center if you're... Um, be elaborate as you like. I'd like to hear it. I'd like to... to see what was going on you know maybe you maybe some of you you had um some of the things that i had or just i just want to see what was going on because a lot of in my opinion uh in the 90s and before it was really hard to find gaming merchandise outside of of the video games themselves so oh i had the I, I plush toys of tales and sonic as well mm -hmm. son of a gun <laughs> I'm just thinking. I had the Cal Toys uh, Tails plush. She trashed that. God dang it. Um, the Sonic wasn't Cal Toys, though. Crap. Anywho. Um, yeah, leave a comment with the link to your video. And I'll add it to that playlist. <laughs>